how to enjoy speaking in verse, and how the verse can help us understand what the lines mean. This is not an academic examination of verse, just an effort to remind experienced actors and to show new actors that verse can be enjoyed. Sometimes we speak in verse naturally. One of the reasons why President Kennedy's most famous words are easy to remember is because they happen to be in verse. He may not have done it consciously, but well, they are. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Verse is simply rhythm. It makes anything you say easier to listen to. It's like dancing. You do a similar move and you repeat it lots and lots of times and then you suddenly throw in a different move. And it's fun to suddenly throw in a different move when you're dancing and it should be fun to do it in verse. Uh, here are two examples of playing with the verse, playing with the rhythm, and they're both from songs. And I will come to Shakespeare's verse in a minute, but I want to just use these songs as they're an easier way of quickly showing you the kind of playing with the rhythm that I'm talking about, enjoying. Lady Gaga does a song which normally goes, I get too hungry for dinner at eight. I never bother with people I hate. But she does it, I get too hungry for dinner at eight. I never bother with people I hate. And by keeping at the rhythm, but concentrating so much time on the word I, she shows that it's I who never bother with people I hate and makes the point she wants to make in the song. If words are in a simple rhythm, only one thing needs to change to suddenly make something that you want to say stand out. So if I speak like this and say that I'm a brilliant acting coach, it won't stand out as much as if I say, I'm a wonderful acting coach. Not because wonderful is better than brilliant, but because wonderful has three syllables. It throws the rhythm. You notice the word. If words are in a simple rhythm, only one thing needs to change to suddenly make something that you want to say stand out. So if I speak like this and say that I'm a brilliant acting coach, it won't stand out as much as if I say I'm a wonderful acting coach. Okay, well, you're getting the idea, just reminding you that there's a rhythm and to look at it because it may also help understand the words. And we're gonna come back after one more example of a song, Frank Sinatra. And this is to the point. Even if you don't like Frank Sinatra, he sings the song, uh, let me see what spring is like. And he doesn't go on Jupiter or Mars. He goes, let me see what spring is like on Jupiter or Mars. And you can have the same extraordinary effect when you're doing to be or not to be in Hamlet. Now let's get to Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. Now, now, Shakespeare didn't write that. Shakespeare didn't write to be or not to be, that is the question. Until we see a clear reason for it, he wrote to be or not to be, that is the question. And if you say that is the question, if you go against the verse, then it rather suggests that that is the question, as opposed to some other question. It, it just it starts meaning something that is quite different to what it could mean if you follow the verse, which is to be or not to be, that is the question. That's the issue. That's what we've been going on about for the last hour in this play. At, at the beginning of uh, Orsino's part in Twelfth Night, he says, if music be the food of love, play on. But the rhythm of the line is obviously meant to be, if music be the food of love, play on. If you think that it's if music, then it sounds as though Orsino's questioning the idea. If music be the food of love, play on. But Orsino isn't questioning anything. Orsino is completely mad, obsessed with the idea of love. And if music be the food of love, play on. And the fact that a few, few seconds later he says, no, stop, is an example of his manic attitude and the fact that it's a comedy. Now, let's take some lines in which there seems to be no change in the verse. And I could read them, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? 
thou art more lovely and more temperate. But obviously the rhythm of the line is meant to be, shall I compare thee to a summer's day, not shall I compare thee, and thou art more lovely and more temperate, not thou art more lovely and more... And by having the words without any change in the rhythm, you sort of wait for a change, or you know that when a change arises it may matter. And the simple, I suppose, I suppose we could say, I mean, interpret it any way you want. But the fact is, there's a rhythm without any breaks, any alterations, any interruptions, any extra syllables. So I suppose that makes it stronger, simpler, clearer. Every one of these words is simply right doesn't need any extra emphasis. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, well, you look at the thing. You look at any bit of verse and just wait to see there's suddenly a, an interruption in the flow. And you've got to think, why? And if there isn't one, how wonderful. How wonderful to have a dance move that is so perfect that you don't have to change it at all. Shakespeare.